Well, it's about time we do another update on this geothermal greenhouse that we are building in Springville, Utah. This is a kit that we purchased from Greenhouse in the Snow out of Alliance, Nebraska. We've uh, purchased some uh, fans and blowers and vents from, I think it's greenhousemegastore.com. Things from Home Depot and Lowe's like everybody else. But real quickly, I've already done um, a video on the outside. Uh, before I show you the insulation, these are twin wall Lexan polycarbonate sheets here on the north wall. You can see we've built earth right up to the sheets. And on the east, west, and north walls, we have metal siding. So I'll show you how that works on the inside. The uh, walls are framed with a 2x2 two two metal framing, which I really like. I think it's great for a greenhouse. But uh, talking about insulation, we uh, did about a four foot dig out here. So I'm four feet below normal ground level, but with the earth that we've pushed up against this greenhouse, it gets us more in the neighborhood of five and a half to six and a half feet below ground uh, where I'm standing. So uh, in regards to insulation, we start with the fact that we're below ground. We get some good insulation from uh, the earth in here. And uh, the other thing that we've done, as you can see, is we sprayed insulation onto all of the metal walls. When this thing was finished on the outside, it was like it was raining in here every day. It would get so wet till the fans would kick on and dry it out. But since we had this insulation sprayed, it doesn't do that anymore. This insulation's about two and a half inches plus thick. And at the request of the insulation contractor, we have uh, put a paint coat over the top of it. And it really is helping stabilize the temperature in the greenhouse. So that kind of gives you an idea where we've gone um, over here. This is just against the uh, earth over here and some framing we had just to really get this thing sealed in good. And uh, again, in this 12 foot room here, you can see the insulation again against the walls, around the vents, around the door. So that'll help us uh, maintain temperature here as we get into winter and then into summer. Next thing uh, I'll show you will be the uh, geothermal. That blower on the wall, when that blower, there's a thermostat just on the other side of the wall, when that thermostat triggers this blower to turn on, it, uh, this room acts as a suction and it pulls air out of these pipes. And we've measured the temperature, it's about 58 degrees coming out of here, which is pretty cool in the uh, hot, hot days we've had to fill that air conditioning. So that is one set of pipes. These pipes go out through the yard to pick up ground temperature. Down on this end, you can see we've got another blower. This blower sits on top of 12 pipes that go 230 feet through the yard. When that thing turns on, and there's the thermostat, we haven't hooked it up to uh, the wall yet, but when that turns on, it pushes air through these pipes 230 feet through the yard, and it comes back in right here got a cover on it because we're kicking up a lot of dust but there are the pipes and we'll put some chicken wire over the top of this when we get finished but that's a little bit of the geothermal that we have going on here I'll show you how the uh, some of the things as we've got the power hooked up this greenhouse sits next to our shop building and uh, we pulled power from the main power pedestal which was at the shop building brought it over here underground and it comes in right here. There's our power box. And uh, so we've got uh, light and power throughout the greenhouse. But importantly also, if you can see these fans, these fans turn on at 85 degrees. And what turns them on is there's a thermostat hanging right here at about to 8 feet. When that thermostat comes on, those fans turn on, the vents open up here, 
but also these two exterior vents here open up when those fans turn on and we get a really nice breeze through here and it helps us maintain temperature from getting too hot in here. It'll be one of the uh, various means we will use to cool this thing in the summer. Right now we're experiencing temperatures in the 50s to 60s as a high and it's very manageable as you can imagine. Um, other than that, I'll show you real quick one interesting component of this greenhouse and I'd love your feedback. As always, we're learning right along with everyone else, but when we put this water in, I don't know if you can see this, but we hit water. And we knew we would. We hit water when we put in the pipes for the geothermal about seven to eight feet down. And um, we think this is gonna ebb and flow throughout the winter, it should come up. And in the summer, it should drop. Uh, we don't think it will come up into the greenhouse. If it does, just as a safety measure, the exit that uh, exit that goes uphill there, that is all gravel, and we trenched that all the way to the pipes, which are eight feet down, so the water will have somewhere to go in the event it comes up. We don't think it will, but better to be safe. These are what the, or the interior walls look like. They're about four feet tall, and we keep stopping while we're working on everything else in here uh, to get this thing insulated and powered and ready for winter. Um, you can see uh, down there that is the start of our aquaponics. I won't say much about that because there's not much to talk about, but once we get going there, we'll show you the aquaponics in here. Um, we have brought in some plants and uh, trees, uh, not many. We're concerned obviously about getting this temperature moderated before we bring too much in here, but this is going to be a tropical, uh, hopefully a zone 10, uh, greenhouse. Uh, I live in a six zone here in, in Utah, so we'd like to keep it between 50 and 87 degrees year-round. We will be using uh, multiple measures of heating and cooling, which we will talk about and some we will learn about and use that, that we haven't even thought about. But that's a quick update on this uh, geothermal greenhouse in Springville, Utah. Love your feedback. Any uh, concerns that you've seen or any recommendations were we're honestly uh, taking our first journey here. We've always wanted to do this and we have a lot to learn. So anyway, that's just a quick update.